we're living in a remarkable time for cancer medicine. Given the advances in molecular sequencing, we can now prescribe an effective therapy based on the genetic changes in a patient's tumor in almost 25% of cases. The pace is remarkable, but unfortunately, the pace of progress has not yet been felt for patients with types of cancers that are deemed to be rare. Facing a cancer diagnosis is devastating enough, but then having a rare cancer and not having a doctor that really understands what causes the cancer or how to treat it is beyond frustrating to most uh, rare cancer patients and their families. Not enough is known about those cancers today to know what would be the best treatment if there even are any treatments for them. One of the reasons that rare cancer research has lagged so far behind is that researchers have not had living tumor tissues with which to perform their experiments. Here at the Broad Institute, we partner with dozens of foundations who each want to provide the opportunity for their patient population to participate in the open source research project we're calling the Rare Cancer Dependency Map Initiative. Those foundations and those patients can help to ensure that little bits of tumors that are still living can be coaxed into cellular models that grow in the lab that then can be shared with researchers anywhere in the world. We work with the patient communities, getting their patients engaged that have upcoming surgeries. And regardless of where they're having their procedure done, we can collect the sample to get it to the broad. When we turn a living piece of a rare tumor tissue into a cellular model, we can then test over 6,000 possible drugs to see whether any drug has any impact on killing those cells growing in a dish. We can use this molecular scissors called CRISPR to snip every gene one by one and find all the vulnerabilities of these cancers even if a drug hasn't been developed. We can do those dependency map experiments systematically in the lab dozens and dozens of times. That allows us to build a lookup table of relationships between the molecular features of rare cancers and their vulnerability patterns. My father, uh, my brother, and my nephew all have been diagnosed with rare cancers. And the fact that models are being created and the data is going to be shared gives me hope, um, not only for my family, but for all the other families and patients that are affected by rare cancers. For most patients with rare cancers, there aren't a tremendous number of ways to influence the trajectory of research. This is what a rare cancer dependency map is trying to make possible, and we think this will be the foundation for therapeutics discovery in rare cancers for decades to come.